Hey guys, it's Davin here at brewbits.com. Behind the camera as usual we've got James. Say hello James. Today I thought we would brew up a wine and one of the questions I'm regularly asked is can you make wine out of the Tetra Pak juices that you get in the supermarket? So as you may have seen I've got a video showing you how to make cider from the apple juice that comes in these but can you make wine from it? Well the simple answer is yes. So I thought I would go to one of our recipes and brew up a mango, orange and pineapple wine made from the tetra packs of these fruit juices. So what are you going to need to make a wine out of these guys? Well obviously you're going to need these and for this I'm using uh, the mango juice drink. The mango juice drink isn't actually pure mango puree, it's mango puree and water because otherwise it would be so thick and so gloopy. Uh, so we've got mango juice drink, we've got three of those, we've got pineapple juice and we've got orange juice. Now they've got natural sugars already in them, so we're going to need to booster that by adding some extra sugar. And here I've got 675 grams of extra sugar, which will lift this up to about 11.5-12%. But we are going to need some few other bits and bobs. Uh, first of all, we're going to need something to be able to sterilise everything, so we've got cleaner steriliser. We've got some pectolase, this will help make sure that it's a nice clear wine at the end. We've got some tannin to add a little bit of extra body and flavour. And then we've got some yeast nutrients and an all-purpose wine yeast. And then later on, so that we can clear it, uh, we've got some fermentation stoppers, some Camden tablets and some finings. That's all our ingredients basically, and then you'll need a bit of equipment. So I've got a long spoon. I've got my uh, simple siphon over here, I've got a bucket to brew everything in, over here I've got a hydrometer in a trial jar, a demijohn with a bubbler and airlock, and then when we come to bottle it I've got some bottles with a cork and something to cork them with. Awesome! There's one other thing we'll need, is a little thing on the bucket here which is called a thermometer, and here I'm using a little uh, liquid crystal thermometer or you can use a dippy in thermometer, whichever you prefer. Right, should we get brewing? So into my sterilised bucket, I'm going to add all the sugar. There we go. And then, this is really, really, really difficult part. All we're going to do is pour in all the juices. Now you've got all your juice in your bucket. Is a simple job of stirring it in. You can hear the the grating of the sugar in the bottom and so it's going to take a little bit of time just to, to dissolve that sugar so keep going till it's all dissolved great so now that's our sugar all dissolved we need to add in first of all i'm going to put in the pectolase now the pectolase is a powder so i'm going to put in a teaspoon of this and what this is going to do because the fruit's been pasteurized or the fruit juices in here has been pasteurized it may have released something called uh, pectin and if that's the case then that may cause us to have quite a hazy one at the end so just in case we're going to use some pectolase and that's going to help break down any pectin that's in there we're going to use something called tannin and this is kind of going to add a little bit of dryness to it um, you know when you've had a really strong cup of stewed tea you'll see it's a lovely brain colour. Now we're not going to overdo it on this, it's going to be a level teaspoon and in that goes. Lovely. And then lastly we're going to add a teaspoon of yeast nutrient. That's uh, just like you and me we need uh, our let's a clean teaspoon for that. Um, we need our vitamins so that we can um, operate brilliantly. Ooh, it's going everywhere, never mind. And in that goes, pop the lid back on, give it a good stir. So yes, the same with the yeast nutrient, just like you and me, we all need our vitamins and so do the yeast. Now all that's been stirred in, I've taken a sample in my trial jar and it's coming out at 1.076. Make a note of that and now we can add our yeast. And here I'm just using an all-purpose white wine yeast. I'm just going to simply get rid of the spoon 
and sprinkle that on the top like that. Now one thing you need to do as well if you've just purchased your packets of cotton from the supermarket, you need to check your temperature. I've already done that and so I knew it was safe to pitch the yeast. And mine's coming out about 20 degrees C. That's because when I got them home, I left them on the countertop and allowed them to just warm up to room temperature. Right, so all we need to do now is the lid goes on loosely. This goes into my warm place at 18 to 22 degrees C for about seven days. The orange, mango and pineapple wine has been set in my bucket now in my warm cupboard for the last seven days. Come on in James and have a look at this. It's got a big frothy top on it. So back to me James, because that's basically telling me that there was loads of bits in, in there, um, in the, the, the juice, like um, I suppose fruit particles, and they've all grabbed hold of the carbon dioxide and they've all bubbled on the top and that's sitting as a nice little crust. So down here though, James, I have got a demijohn and a siphon and this little thing because I wasn't expecting there to be a huge amount of sediment in this. Now, what is that thing? Well, that is what we call a siphon sock. And the siphon sock literally pops over the end of the siphon where you've got the sediment trap. And you dip the two ends and you tie it up. Well, that simple as that. I'm going to do it a second one. I would do a little bow, but uh, there we go. Done. Right. I've sterilised my siphon sock. I've sterilised my siphon, and I've sterilised my demijohn. So we're just going to literally break through into the top here. Come on in, James. Have a look. There. Oh, look at that. Look. It is just a crust. Perfect. And on the other end of the tube, quick suck. And we'll get the wine flowing. Get it all the way down the tube that is to the bottom of the demijohn so you don't end up with any splashing. And now it's just going to take a, a little while for you to siphon this off. As you can see, I've tilted my bucket so that we can get as much out as possible. And come on in, James, have a look at this. It looks like an omelette. <laughs> and so our siphon socks really, really helped here. It stopped any of that glump getting in. And now just a quick let the siphon go through and then we're done. Right. I don't need that anymore. This can go on the compost heap. And all we have to do now is pop our airlock back in, like so. In the top here, I've just filled up to the height of the first two bubbles with some um, sterilizing solution. And I know there's a big air gap here. Don't worry about that. The carbon dioxide that's still being let off from the wine during the fermentation will quickly fill that with carbon dioxide and that will start pushing it out like it already is doing so right now. So leave it, this goes back into my warm cupboard now for um, a little longer so that all the bubbles stop bubbling through. And then once the bubbles have stopped bubbling through regularly, we can take a reading with our hydrometer and see if it's ready for us to bottle. The mango, pineapple, and orange wine has been sat in my warm place in the demijohn now for another two weeks. And you can see it started to clear. It started to settle out at the bottom. And so I've taken a reading with my hydrometer and it's coming out at 0.996. So I know it's time for us to move on. So down here, I have got myself another bucket and a siphon. I've run out of other demijohns, otherwise I'll be putting it straight into a demijohn. So this is gonna to have to go from Demijohn to bucket, back to demijohn after we've cleaned it out of all the seven. But we'll do all that in a moment. So, first thing we're going to do, nice and easily, I'm using a simple siphon here, which means I've got to have a quick suck on the end. And into the bucket to get the flow going. Back to me a second, James, because I always get comments about this saying, how does it, how can it be, salad three if you're sucking on the end of the tube. Well, if you don't want to use one, the sucking method, you can quite easily put an auto siphon in there, a couple of quick pumps, and it'll get it going for you. So, nice and easy as that. Take it down, as you can see, I'm going down with the wine with the sediment trap at the bottom. And when you get to the bottom, just tilt the damage on very, very carefully, and so you can get all the wine out without 
disturbing the sediment. I've got my wine back into the demijohn and I've taken it off the sediment at the bottom. Always good to have a little cheeky taster. Oh, that is lovely. It's got a natural sweetness to it as well. That is, that is really, really nice. That is adult lilt. Anyway, what we need to do now is we need to um, kill any remaining yeast in there and get it ready so that we can clear it. Because I know it's quite clear at the moment, but we want this to be beautifully clear. So we're going to need our couple of things that I showed you right at the beginning. We're going to need our fermentation stopper. And the fermentation stopper is just some little pellets. And because we've only got a gallon here, we're only going to need half a teaspoon, just a tiny amount in that slide. You can do as it says on the packets, uh, dissolve it in some wine first of all. But you can see how quickly it naturally dissolves in there anyway. And the second thing is I'm going to go here for a Camden tablet. We need just one crushed Camden tablet. And these two, the Camden tablet and the fermentation stopper work amazingly well together to kill any remaining yeast, prevents any um, oxygen, anything like that, uh, causing our lovely fresh wine to go funky. So, in here now, you'll start seeing some bubbles coming up through the airlock. That's not because it's fermenting. Can you see all the bubbles coming up through the wine? There is a load of carbon dioxide that's been dissolved by the yeast as the yeast were fermenting in the wine. So what we need to do now is we need to knock this out of suspension. Um, it's just like trying to make a can of Coke flat, really. Um, because it will, if we don't get it flat, it will inhibit the uh, clearing process. So one of the easiest ways to do it is grab hold of your damage on both sides. and give yourself a really good swirl. You can see how much is coming out. <laughs> loads and loads and loads spurting out. And then we'll go back the other way. Loads and loads and loads more carbon dioxide spurting out again. There is loads coming out. So active. And we'll do it again. <laughs> And the other way. We need to do this continuously for about 10 minutes. Get rid of all that carbon dioxide. After a good 10 minutes of really swishing this around, I've got pretty much all the carbon dioxide out. So now it's time for us to add our finings. And here I'm using clear finings, which is a two-stage finings with bottle A and bottle B. Uh, one's key cell sole and one's a, a silicon finings if you're interested. And I reckon I've got about a medium level of um, haze in this, let's call it. So I'm going to use just two mil in my little syringe of A. And I'm just going to pop that in. It might not seem a lot, but all this is going to do is grab hold of the little particles that are floating around. And when you add up all those little particles in there, that's not going to be very much. Anyway, pop that back in. We're going to give this a good swirl again to mix in Finings A into our wine. Really, really, really good stuff. It's been an hour since we added Finings A, so now it's time to add Finings B. And we add the same amount of findings A as findings B, so about two mil. So I don't accidentally knock that over, just pop the top back on. Take the airlock out. Pop that in. And give that a good swirl. Easy as that. So these two findings are now going to work together and they're going to grab hold of any of the particulates that are floating around in the wine. And that's going to make them all clump together and they're all going to sink to the bottom. It's going to take about uh, a week to two weeks for that to happen. So this now needs to go somewhere cool that it's not going to be disturbed for the next two weeks. Look how lovely and clear this is. You can see me through it. 
Hello. Right, so now it's lovely and clear, it's ready for bottling. So down here, I've got a bucket and a simple siphon, both sterilized, because we need to get the wine off of the sediment that you can see down in the bottom, and that's really quite delicate. So if we were going to bottle straight from here, it'd be quite likely you were gonna disturb that sediment and get it into the bottles. So, here I'm using a simple siphon. On this end, I've got myself a little bucket clip, and you'll see what I'm gonna do with that in a moment. If you want to, uh, or sorry, I should say, you don't wanna use your, your lips on this one, then you can get an auto siphon where you just pop it in like this, pump it a few times, and get it going. Otherwise, you just give it a good suck. What I'm gonna do with a bucket clip, you just pop it on the side there. We're ready to bottle, so I'm gonna change around my siphon slightly. I'm gonna take off this little clip here because we don't need the sediment trap anymore because all the sediment's gone. I am going to put my bucket clip on the side of the bucket up here this time and clip my siphon into it. That helps me uh, so it doesn't fly everywhere. And on this end, I'm gonna take a little tap, pop that in and ready. I'm ready to go. So over here, I've got my bottles, which have also been sterilized and ready to go. And so down here, try and pour the wine down the side of the bottle so it doesn't splash. It helps prevent uh, infection. And then just fill it up to about a finger's worth above the neck because of course we're gonna need a bit of space to get the cork in. There we go. That's one bottle done. I've got five more to go. Oh no, I got five and three quarters. I think I might be having that one a little bit later. But now we're gonna be corking. So over here on the stove, I've just literally put a small amount of sodium metabisulfate solution and pop the corks in, left the lid on for a minute, turn the heat off as soon as it got to boil. And what that does is that actually um, makes the corks a little bit softer a little bit easier for going in. So here I'm just using a little three-handed corker, nice and easy. And in, off we go. Just got a few more to do. What we're gonna do now is gonna put, make a fancy little label to go on our bottles. And I'm gonna pop some little shrink caps on the top. Um, that will pretty it all up. If you want to know how to shrink the shrink caps onto the tops of the bottles, then we've made a video uh, showing you how to shrink those on. I just go and watch that. I'll put a link in the, uh, the notes down below. So that's it. That is an easy way to make wine from mango juice drink and pineapple juice and orange juice into one drink. And I think, Gorgeous colour. Lovely glass of wine there. Cheers guys, enjoy. If you make this yourself, down in the comments below, let me know how you've got on. If you've got any questions, got any thoughts, got any ideas that you've made your wine out of cartons, then uh, yeah, pop it in the comments below, let me know and who knows, might try it ourselves. For now, cheers and happy brewing.